Welcome back to CNN Philippines Network News. How can a young entrepreneur be recognized globally before hitting 30? Well, for Filipino French Henry Mott Munoz, who is one of Forbes 30 under 30 this year, success is defined through his anti corruption non governmental group and his student course matching service. He's here with us in the studio to tell us more about that. Good evening, Henry. Thank you very much for joining us. Hi, good evening. Thanks for having us. Okay, tell us first about this uh, um, NGO. Bantai.ph. How did you start it and why, why, why did you get into this? Sure. So um, a couple of years ago, there was a, an anti-corruption website in India that was getting a lot of traction. And I had been looking for a project for a couple of years that I could implement in the Philippines to um, give back a little bit. And so when I read about it, emailed a good friend of mine, and we decided to try to do something similar. And so this was in 2011. And so we set up in 2012, and we've been uh, slowly working our way through good governance. And what exactly do you do? So we, as the name suggests, Bantai is about watching and making government uh, accountable to the citizens. So we, we have a, diff a bunch of different projects. Um, we train students on what it means to uh, be a good citizen. We watch government departments, and so we visited uh, LG offices across uh, Metro Manila, and rated them based on whether or not they were uh, complying with anti-corruption laws in this country. And then we also have more grassroots initiatives with uh, low-income families on helping them figure out what their rights are. All right, tell us about education.ph. This is a course matching service? Yes, yeah. so the mission of education.ph is to help high school students find uh, college courses that will get them into employment. Uh, so we literally start with a 15-year-old, uh, which now will, will take them through senior high school and all the way into college if they decide to do college until they're ready for employment. All right. A while ago you mentioned that um, you wanted to do this because you wanted to give back. Why is it important for you to give back? Sure. So I grew up between Europe and the Philippines, so I spent a lot of time here growing up. Um, and I think you see the inequality everywhere. And it's really inequality not just of... Um, the quality of life, but really of the opportunities. Uh, and so it's something I've been quite passionate about. A lot of my relatives um, quietly do a lot of good work. And so I always knew I wanted to come back and, and do something. I just didn't quite know what. What do you think now? Uh, we're heading into elections in about three months, uh, and uh, choosing the country's next leaders is such a big thing no? for the next generation, of, well, for, for all voters. Yes. Is that question around what do I think about the? You know, like, <laughs> no, you don't. I'm not asking you who you know who, who you think should win yeah. or anything. But you know, what what is your perspective? How do you feel about uh, all these you know all these candidates coming up, all the issues against them? Um, you know, voters trying to decide who they're going to vote for. Who's the right person? You know? So I think it's quite interesting. And the app you just mentioned on uh, on the show. A few minutes ago. Yes, I think it's very interesting to try to understand what is their track record in fighting for the advocacies that they have and asking them for more details about what they'll do once they're in power. Because, you know, everyone is for education. Everyone is for full employment. Everyone's against poverty. But what I would find very interesting is go through the candidates' very detailed policy. What are you doing about education? What, what would you change? What would you keep? And once you have that full grasp, then you can decide who jibes more with your perspective on it. Those questions you've, uh, well, asked or tried to find answers to. These are the questions that I'd, I'd want to ask um, to the candidates. And uh, are you satisfied with what you've heard so far? So, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think there's been some good answers, but ironically, at the Sean, we're, we're working on, um, on a proposal we're going to ask every presidential candidate to state kind of their views on education to employment. Uh, but it's not something we've done yet, so I wouldn't be able to judge the quality of their answers. All right. Thank you very much uh, for joining us, Henry Montanos. Maraming salamat. Thank you. Let's check.